Okay, I'm going to attempt <laughs> to give my feelings on seeing Cyril Wecht speak last night. The bullet hit Kennedy five and one half inches below shoulder level. When I came to learn that he was extremely uh, popular uh, singer at that time. Uh, so I got a call from two guys telling me they were working on a documentary uh, dealing with Kurt Cobain's death. Uh, the circumstances of his death were as follows. Um, um, a separate building uh, apart from the nice home that he lived in with uh, his, his wife, uh, Courtney Love, um, there was this uh, large garage and on the second floor of the garage, a beautiful apartment um, where he would go and do his drug thing. He had his own personal kit, beautiful brown leather kit, in which uh, there were holders for the syringe, a couple of needles, um, alcohol swabs, um, and the different uh, drugs, and the tourniquet. Um, so uh, he injected himself with heroin, the level of which was extremely high. It would have been enough to kill three, four people if divided into equal portions. Um, so then he, this is the, the scenario that they finished up with. He then took this syringe, detached it from the needle, cleaned them all off, <laughs> took the tourniquet and the needle and the syringe and everything back into the case, closed it up, absolutely clean and so on. And after having done that, and he should be, you know, in Nirvana with that kind of heroin. <laughs> and, uh, and what is it? He decides uh, that's not good enough, and uh, whatever he saw, and he commits suicide with a shotgun. Um, and that uh, would be difficult to do, right, with a shotgun, I would think. Well, as opposed to a yeah, it, it can be done. It's, uh, but that that's it was physically awkward, but not impossible. But the point is, the scene was never examined, John like it should have been and treated as a homicide. In a scene like that, you don't start off assuming it's a suicide, you start off assuming it's a homicide so that you don't miss anything. You look for physical trace evidence, hair, fibers, fingerprints, footprints, you get the whole background history, who was around and, and everything like that. But they just started off assuming it was a suicide and that's the way it was handled. So meantime, I um, was interviewed at length, and I'm in this documentary, I recommend it to you. Uh, you'd be very fascinated by it. Uh, uh, Soaked in Bleach. It's an, it was an outstanding uh, documentary. Um, and um, I guess you know, it's available wherever you find these things on, on TV. <laughs> and, um, and that's the story about Kurt Cobain, a real mystery. Uh, people try very hard to um, get the case re-examined. They even uh, dig up the body and so on, uh, but uh, uh, they were unsuccessful. Sorry, I'm a little ill, so I'm put together, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so what was difficult about it? And it was, it was a difficult night. Um, that's you saw the clip that I uploaded. It's like 30 seconds, and he just speaks about the drug kit, and it's like, you know. But the thing, the thing was, is like, and what it, it's frustrating because Kurt was all around. Every place around was playing Nirvana. As soon as I got there, you know, it's just all around and when he got to that case it's like the whole auditorium kind of held their breath but yet no one wanted to talk about it further it's like that's it come on there's a little more here but people are still don't want to freaking talk about it that was the feeling I got, and it's because of the drug thing. It's like, oh, but but drugs. And it's also the punk rock thing. I'm sorry, but it is. It's just like... <sighs> I wasn't able to ask questions that I... 
if I were sitting a little closer, like down to the front, I'd have been down there. I'd have got a question in, but it's a, the night wasn't like that. I couldn't have asked him the specific questions I wanted. I would have asked him something that not everyone talks about forensically. Um, but what they would do is just like, you couldn't even get your hand up because people would just like shout out a name uh, because he's had so many different cases that this man has examined, you know, Marilyn Monroe and JFK and RFK and OJ Simpson and Jean Benet Ramsey. So it's, it, it wasn't about Kurt, but yet it was because for me, everything is music and it's all, the music's all around me, no matter where I went. And so Kurt's there no matter where I went, but yet it just wasn't enough. Because of course, all I want to know, I mean, the other stuff, of course, I want to, I mean, believe me, I was listening to all of it, but it's like, that's all you're going to say? Isn't there more? And you can feel that, like, people were kind of like, ah. and then that was it, and then, but nobody wanted to ask anything more. Um, so that was very, very difficult for me. And if I were, you know, seated closer, I'd be like, well, excuse me, sir, just one question, just something else in, something else in. But I, I wasn't able to do that. And I have chronic pain, so I, I couldn't, so I couldn't have waited the two hours, at least two or three hours after the fact to get to him and get a photo and have my book signed and ask him. I probably could ask him. He would have, because he, he loves talking about this stuff. And, that, you know, that was very cool for me because I love listening to it, obviously. Um, very into forensics. That's the truth right there. It's like, people will lie about crap. Um, and they've lied about this case so bad for so long. It's like, yeah, but... Um, you can lie, but the forensics don't lie. So those are, those aren't like your opinion. That's a pretty much the facts. You know, that, those are the facts right there. So, uh, so people weren't willing to speak. And uh, for me, Dr. Wecht coming to stand for Kurt was huge for me because, um, you know, that's, that's a very reputable person coming to stand up for someone that, that people have just put down the whole, the whole thing. He's just put down into this disgusting kind of thing that people look at. And also the punk rock thing for me, and nobody came us stood up for us. And one of the reasons why I knew right away when I started reading about this case is she kept fucking calling the cops. Oh, let me call 911. Let me call 911. You do not call 911 if you are a punk rocker and you're in trouble. You don't want to die and you don't want to go to jail. Her doing that was an act of violence, I'm telling you. I, I can't explain it if you weren't in it, but it's like, you do not, you call one of your, you know, you don't call the police. They're just going to come and like, go off. Oh my God. I mean, just lear learn a little bit about even like, look at the Southern California scene and look at the black flag. And these people would come in and just billy club everyone. There'd be no problems at all, but they didn't like it. They didn't like the way they looked. They didn't like our music. <laughs> you just, you do not call 911 if you're Kurt or Courtney. You don't, you don't. So that, her doing that is like, and over like, oh my God, he did, threw juice in my face. What the f*** are you calling the cops for? She's, she's establishing that. She's establishing them coming to the house. So that when she called, when, you know, she needed it, they're like, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of time. So Dr. Wecht is like, from that kind of, you know, he works with law enforcement. He works with, he, it's, it's a huge person to come up and stand for him and basically 
say, yeah, it's it's complete bull. Such bull. He's laughing about it, and like his colleagues and everyone knows it's bull. Everyone. Um. So that was cool to hear, and that that all was really cool. The drug, the uh. The drug kit stuff that he said was confusing because he's like, well, he had his, his nice case and he had it in a separate, you know, from the house. And it was like a, a nice, he said, I think he said it was leather or something. I'm like, is he talking about another kit that I'm not aware of? <laughs> like any, a nice, an even nicer one? Because obviously we know it's that cigar box and that's not what he said. But then I realized that, his point is that was a very clean kit. I did another video on the tolerance. It's in there if you want to watch it. Uh, I think that's a pretty important video about, you know, the tolerance arguments, total bull It's a good one. But uh, I said a little bit about the kit in that already. And I showed the photo. Um, like that's a pretty high resolution photo of the cigar box. Zoom in on it. There's not a speck of freaking dust in that box. It's clean. That's not what a big old junkie's kit looks like. It's a rat's nest. And I don't have a photo. Maybe I could find something online and put it in. But I had a friend of mine who's very upset and uh, he called me. He had, he, Finally got his junkie ex who had boarded herself up in the living room out. And I was helping him like mentally to do it. Finally got her out. He's like, I'm going to have to throw away this whole dresser and take the top drawer to like a biohazard place. I'm like, what? What do you mean? Like, send me a picture. <laughs> Which he thought was weird. But that's kind of what I like. I want to see it. I need to know. And he did. And it was just like you know, oh, wow, gross. The whole drawer was needles. It's like, they're not like stacked in there. It's like jumbled up piles of needles with like blood and stuff. And like, ugh, it was really gross. Like you wouldn't want to touch it. And yeah, he had to take the top drawer to get it disposed of with a biohazard place. And like, if you read Mark Lanigan's book, he talks about, you know, he has like the needles. And he just starts piling them up. They just like pile up there. And so did Lane Staley. And then when Patty Schemmel, she's talking about throwing the needles out of the car when they're going to the intervention. Like if you're a big junkie, the way they try to say, you don't have a nice little kit like that. That looks like a kit that was staged. It's clean. It's got like exactly what you would need, minus the water source next to it for him to shoot up, but whatever. Uh, exactly what you would need to shoot up. And that's it. That's not a big old junkie kit. Um, it, it does not look like that. That's what he's trying to say. This is a nice, clean looking kit. Um, so he's basically saying, yeah, it's staged. The, cop, the cops are in on it. Um, which, you know, to people that don't know this theory, that's like crazy thing to say. And I used to say, oh, no, she fooled the cops. And so then they were just forced to, this couldn't have happened if law enforcement wasn't involved. It couldn't have happened and continued the way it was and then it continued to cover it up. It couldn't have happened without the cooperation. It couldn't have. And he's like pretty much saying that too. So that was like, whoa. But he's saying that, that's the thing is he's saying that about all these cases. How corrupt, this is what's hard for me, how corrupt our government is and how corrupt our court system is that if you have money and you have fame and you have this, you can buy whatever an outcome you want. And each one that he talks about, he talks about how they did it. 
<laughs> so I wish he would have got into that a little more with this case because he did with the other ones, but he didn't with this one except to say like, yeah, everyone knows. Um, but the, what was hard for me is um, <clears throat> there's nothing you could do about it. Everyone knows, but um, history will be written the way they say it is. It's not going to tell the truth. I'm telling you the truth tonight. And, you know, the truth will be in my books. But after I'm gone, history will not be written that way. History will be written that he was a huge suicidal drug addict. And that's it. And there's nothing you could do. And that was just like, <laughs> no, we're going to do something. And uh, I don't know. I just still think with the... The, the, the Seattle police, I followed them for a long time. They're corrupt as f There are so many, get on YouTube and start searching. There are so many instances where they, oh, the gun just went off. They're under federal review for excessive force, racism, you know, profiling, corruption, the whole thing. The feds don't come in <laughs> to, to reorganize a police force from the top to the bottom if they're not corrupt. The feds don't come in. The feds are like, you're done. We are going to oversee you now. And that happened in 2014 and especially in two, um, 2021 last year. It's going down in Seattle and we have the changing of the guard right now. And that's why I think this is the time. That's what we've been waiting for is a change of the guard. This there and uh if we put enough pressure, we could maybe do it. Because the reason Cyril Elect is saying there's nothing you could do is this isn't his time. And I knew that going there. I knew that it wasn't going to be a lot about Kurt because this was not his time. Kennedy is his time. That's the case. He was, you know, by the time Kurt comes around, he's like, well, the kids, you know, he's like an older guy already. <laughs> um... His career and everything was, I mean, the whole world was looking at Kennedy, that there's two two shooters. Like, how is he alive? He's, he's the for only, the only man to step up and say, uh, what are you talking about? There's two shooters to the Warren Commission. Nobody else had the nuts. Nobody had the nuts. And he's up there saying, yeah, the CIA murdered our president. I mean, you know, <laughs> it was huge. So I knew that was what the night was going to be about. And that was fascinating. And that was such an injustice. And they have it on film. You see him being shot in the freaking front of the head. And they're like, no, it's coming from way back there, like a block away. It's ridiculous. There, there's one bullet that came from back there and it went through Kennedy and it went through uh, the colonel, I forget his name, in front, and then it passed right back through the colonel and then it went through Kennedy and back. Th it's like, what the f are you talking about? You, we, you could see the, the Zip, it's called the Zapruder film. And there's a really leveled out copy on YouTube. I mean, you see him. He gets hit. You could see him get hit from the back because he is shot from there. And then right after that, you see him get shot right in the, and his head goes back and there's stuff flying up. He's shot in his head from the front. And they're still saying, no. That didn't happen, everyone. That came from back there. And that was powerful because he's basically saying the same thing. The media controls everyone's perceptions. That is what they said first. There's one shooter. So they already said it. And then they had to sit there and keep piling on and then put together a whole commission to prove why. So the bias and what the media reports and what they say, that's the truth. The truth isn't the truth. 
And that's what was really hard for me to understand. But that's what he, he's saying because he watched the CIA murder our president and he never got justice. Kennedy never got justice. How the f did he get justice for someone like Kurt? It's just like, maybe we will because he's not, you know, that would like tear the whole fabric because the society is our government. Maybe we can get it for Kurt, but. And like I said, I, I think we can. This is the time. We're going to do it. We're going to do it now. Because it's a changing of the guard and they're in there already having to put these people and put them to their life. Put the pressure on the freaking FBI. Oh, they got 10 letters and they didn't do anything. Okay, let's flood them. Let's send them 10,000 letters. Do something. Here's why. We're sick of it. Stop lying to the ass. <laughs> so... <laughs> The feds are there and the feds can come in and they could, okay, well, let's look at the evidence. I don't know. I think it could be done um, because they're under review. It's not them. It's not them anymore. So that was overwhelming and huge to hear all of these cases that were such injustice and they're so wrong. And, you know, what they, how they did it to cover it up, hiring the whole commission. The commission, they put the guy that was just fired in charge. I mean, they had a motive. They didn't want him in there. Uh, so that was very difficult to process. Um, but him standing up, you know, it's just, it has always been a lot to me. I've always been a fan because his work is is incredible and he's done so many cases and um so that was what was hard it, it was cool to hear him say that you know yeah we know like most of his colleagues they know it's it's so it's laughable but there's nothing you could do um if they couldn't do anything for this person this would like how are we gonna do that so um but yeah, he's he's telling people, you know, like we, me thinking, oh yeah, I think the police are involved. He's saying, don't be naive. Of course they are. Don't be naive. They're the ones in charge. So whatever they want to happen is what's going to happen. And that's going to be written in history. It's not a... Uh, Oh, that's going way too far. When people start talking about the cops, and I just can't. Well, then you're f naive. <laughs> you, I mean, look at the Kennedy. Sh and get a, try to have an original thought for yourself. If you can't believe this, you're too emotional. You're not like looking at the facts. It's, the forensics behind this. You couldn't have done it. Period. No, none of these cases, the forensics don't fit, and that's what he's there to talk about. All of them. So it for me, obviously, it wasn't enough about Kurt. I wanted to hear more. I wanted to be able to ask him a question. Because Kennedy, like, after that, that, like, destroyed our whole trust in, in our government. That was, like, over after that. And then there was Vietnam, and it was over after that. It's like, wow, you can murder the president right in front of us and say that it's this and there's nothing we can do. Like, nobody trusts the government except for the people that are paid to sit there with a PR and say and do whatever they want. And the cops are the same guy. Of course they're in on it. It's like, wow. Um, so, yeah, don't be naive. Don't be naive. They're going to do whatever they want. Um. Let's flood those motherfuckers. We're in there right now. Let's flood those motherfuckers. We want you to do something about this injustice. Because it is a big injustice. And it's not just one little thing. It's all, I mean, all anyone has to do is actually look at it. Someone else. Not those five. Just someone else. Someone like, what? One eighth of a brain cell. That knows anything about forensics is gonna look at them and be like, <laughs> obviously you, you and you try to not only that you sat there and you said this is a, didn't even happen. So the and then the just as a last little note, 
someone had asked him uh, who, if you had one case that still gets at you and you can't forget that you, you kind of don't know, what is it? And it's Marilyn Monroe. Um, he just was like, I don't know. She could have. It's been. Um, it could have been an accidental. Oh, but it could have been murder. Yeah. He just. That's the one that sticks with him. Because there's so much evidence. But he didn't. He just couldn't say. That he wants to, but he can't say. Um, so if I had a question by the end, if I had a, one question at the end, it was how, how do you do this, sir? How do you sit here and you know this and you still have a sense of humor and you just go to the next one? How do you do that? I have a very hard time doing that because when I see an injustice and, you know, obviously people in, in the groups and every, that people, it's like really difficult to see an injustice in someone that is bullied and really maligned. You want to make it right because this, this is a terribly maligned case. It's misunderstood and people are just so stupid with their bias. Oh, we only heard this. Well, that's what it is. Well, then you're, you're a sheep. Move along. Like, you don't even deserve to be in the conversation. So just move along. You know, don't talk to a, a pathologist and with this opinion because they're just going to laugh at you and you're going to look like a freaking idiot. So, yeah, that was my question at the end. Like, how, how do you know all of this and still keep your sense of humor? And, and... <laughs> I, how, how he tried so hard and there wasn't anything he could do but I think times are changed because I feel them and I'm feeling it change I felt it change and it's right right now it's right now the time is right now and uh maybe we can do do for this what he wasn't able to do and it's gonna take a bunch of us it's gonna take a whole bunch of us I'll put the links below that uh, I just saw that everyone could do who you can write to and how we want you to do something. They work for us. That's the thing. <laughs> we pay their salary. They work for us. They act like it's the other way around. It isn't. Do your f job. How about that? That's all we want. We just want you to do your f job. So maybe. He's right, but maybe he isn't right. And only thing we could do is do something instead of just sitting there. And let's let him know. Get off your ass. Do your job. That's all. Thanks. Check it out. Can you please open that up? Someone else. Because everyone in there that's still there is going to move along, moving along. We can get it. We can get it. We just got to put more pressure. Not 10 letters. Oh, the FBI released 10 letters. Oh, that really... Who gives a shit? Well, they're going to give a shit a whole bunch of us. We're like, hi, why are you still saying this? Because we want you to tell the truth now, okay? Thanks. Do something. You're in there. Open the freaking vault. You know, before those evidence and all what happened, all the evidence, the fixtures, they just disappeared. That's why Richard Lee stopped. He's like, if I keep going, they're going to destroy it. Are they going to go in there with the feds in there right now and destroy sh Let's get them. Let's get it. Let's get it. I, I don't want to be. I'm not naive. I'm definitely not naive. I know what they're doing. I know they can do it. And they can do it. But sometimes they can't do it. They can't do it. Because the whole thing place is just like you know like the bride of frank saying no you're not
Because we're going to hold you accountable. So let's hold them accountable. Look at the links below. Let's do it. Get the f out of there and open that vault. And get someone in there and tell us what really happened. Shut the f up with this theory because I'm so sick of it. Let's get them.